to you now yes sir. okay so we were doing this question that was uh, we were having this one that we calculate the mass percentage when when 25 grams of salt is present in 500 ml of solution so how can you do it you have to calculate mass by mass percentage so that was w by w percentage is equals to uh, mass of mass of solute solute upon mass of solution mass of solution into 100 that was the formula so how can you write this one you can simply write this one mass of solute kitna the mass of solute is 25 it is being given to you 25 grams but the mass of solution is not being given it is it is being given that it is 100 m 50, 500 ml only so if the 500 ml is being given to you then how will you solve this type of question this is 500 ml only 500 ml is being given to you this is no um, this is not being given in ma in kg or grams okay so how, what you need to do is you need to convert this ma volume into grams into grams so that's the, uh, that we have the relation between the uh, when we convert the mass into grams sorry uh, ml into grams the we have we need to know the density and here the we need to keep in mind here is that uh, there is the, the the volume of is given is of solution means the volume is given of solution and the density should be of solution not of the solute or not of the solvent solvent so it's it is it, it must be clear to you that if the ml if the volume is given of solution then the density must be given of solution and here it is been given in the question okay so we need to convert it uh, density of solution is equals to mass of solution upon volume of solution so you can write here density is 1.2 and mass of solution you need to calculate into velocity into into volume what is the volume so you can write here first you can write here volume so that will be equal to that is 500 when you when this goes to that side it will become 600 mass of uh, that will be in grams because the density is in gram per ml so whatever the unit is here is uh, that we will get get the mass so mass of solution of solution is 600 okay so you can write here 600 into 100 so when you divide it by two what you will get uh, you will get 25 by 6 is the mass by mass percentage okay or you can divide it uh, by the simulation okay so please copy this one done sir done okay uh yeah maradula have you done no sir copy it Sir, can we divide that final answer? Yeah, you can divide it. Why not? You can divide 125 by 6. And you divide 120, sorry, 25 by 6. So you've got 4. 4.1. 4. Okay, huh, yeah, you can get 4.1. Okay. So this will be 24, then you will get 1, then point is 0, then 1, then 6, then 4, then 0, and 6. Okay, 6 so this will be 4.16% approx. Okay, so similarly, this, this done, are the sir. done. Okay, 
so let's move uh, okay so if if the percentage is given if if the mass of the solution is given to you uh, and uh, you, how can you solve these questions actually we, we can have a different formula okay how can we if if the mass of the solution is not given if that if the density of the solution is given and how you can you solve this by using the direct formula how can we solve this one let it be what did you need the formula actually you know the formula the density is equal to mass upon volume otherwise it may be uh, may create a complication so let it be learn as that i have taught you that density is equal to mass by volume is the relation okay but you need to keep in mind that if the density is of solution then the mass should be of solution and volume should be of solution okay which whichever the unknown quantity you will get the, the same okay so let's move further and do the next questions we we were studied that we have studied in volume by volume also volume by volume and mass by volume yeah mass by volume percentage mass by volume percentage we have also discussed this one volume percentage so uh, what was that this was the that that mass of of solute solute upon upon volume of solution here it is volume mean so you have to write here volume of solution into 100 into 100 so here if i'm going to give you a question that calculate calculate mass by volume percentage percentage when when 70 grams of of solute of solute is dissolved is is dissolved in 343 ml of of solvent of solution calculate Okay, for your easy calculations, can I change the digit or let it be? Make it make it 490 ml. Make it 490 ml. So that it will be easy. 490 ml. So one by seven. How much percent? Seven by seven. One by seven percent. Yes, sir. Sir, no. Check it again. Hamna, have you done? Sir, seventeen percent. Seventeen percent. Hamna does not tell us other. You, she used to keep quiet. Then I ask, then she is only going to give the answer. If you have done, then please let me know. Okay. So this one is simple. Uh, that you need to give it 70 upon 490 into 100. So when you cut it, don't cut the zero. Yes. Okay. Cut zero. Okay. This zero can be cut by this one. Then you cut it. You will get here 10. And then you can get here the 7. Okay. 
तो हंड्रेड अपॉन सेवन अप्रोक्सीमेट फोर्टीन पॉइंट टू वेन यू डिवाइड इट दिस इज नॉट सेवेंटी when you divide it you will get 6 point something uh, 16 point something and that will be approximately 17 version so when you divide it you will get when you divide 100 by 7 you will get uh, 16 point something 7 one the 7 then you will get 3 then 0 then 7 4 no it is something 40 14 percent something 7 for that 28 then 2 then 0 point okay then 7 Three is a twenty-one approximate. So approximate it will be fourteen point. If there is only one, then you can have there is approximately. Just one key come. So you can write here the one one point four three percent approx. Okay, or you can write it four point two nine. Okay, got it. Got it, Hamna. Where you were committing mistake. Got it, both of you. Should we move to the next question? Yes, sir. Okay, let's let's do the next question. Calculate the mass by volume percentage when twenty five mL of ethanol. Ethanol is dissolved, dissolved in in hundred mL of water. Density of ethanol of ethanol is zero point eight gram per mL. do this question wisely Sir, twenty percent. Twenty percent. Hamna, have you done? Hamna, have you done, beta? Yes, sir. What is the answer? Twenty. Twenty. Same twenty percent. So how can we first we need to calculate? Then we need to write the formula. That's very easy question. That's let's. But you need to do it wisely. It is very simple question. We had we are calculating the mass by volume percentage, and this is simple, very easy question. First of all, 
we must have the mass of the mass is uh, here the solute is is actually the ethanol ethanol is acting as a solute means because we are acting uh, we are adding it to the water okay so here it is acting as a solute so you knows very well that 25 ml it is being given to you it in ml but you need in grams because here you need to capture the mass of solute means you need you need the mass of solute not the volume of the solute and but in the question it is being given that it is it is going to have 25 ml you don't know the mass of that one okay and here you need to get the volume of solution volume of solution into 100 but here the only the volume of water is being given it is not the volume of solution is not being given to you okay so first of all what we need to do is we need to add we need to convert the mass of solute into the ma into we need to calculate the mass of solute and how can we calculate the mass of solute so density of solute is equals to mass of solute upon volume of solute upon volume of solute upon solute okay so here the density density of ethanol is being given to you and that is 0.8 so we will write here 0.8 into volume of solution is 25 so we will write here 25 is equals to mass of solute it will give you mass of solute Okay, so when you multiply twenty five with eight, you will get twenty point zero. So here you will get the mass of solute is actually twenty grams. Twenty gram mass of solute is equal to mass of solute is equal to twenty grams. Take one, take one, take one. When you multiply this point eight, yeah, you will get two hundred. Okay, yeah. Twenty grams. So it is twenty grams. Now you need to keep here that you need to uh, you need to put the value of Volume of solution, but it is being given that it is only hundred mL is being given to you. Hundred mL of water is being given to you, not the mass of solution. So the volume of solution, total volume of the solution will be twenty five mL plus hundred mL. So when you add this to hundred mL plus twenty five mL, it will give you one twenty five mL. Okay, so we have to put here one twenty five mL into hundred. When you cut it, you will get twenty five fourza, twenty five fiveza, then five oneza, and five. Uh, five five za, so that will be twenty percent. Okay, very good. I am proud of you. Have you done the like, like this way, both of you? Yes, sir. Okay, Hamna, have you copied this one? Yes, sir. Okay, let's move towards the further next question. Okay, so this type of questions will come in examinations. These are the simple questions. Uh, let's let's move towards the next topic. That is, that is, uh, volume by volume percentage. Volume by by volume percentage. What is it? Mass of sorry, volume of solution. Volume of solute. Sorry, volume of solute, and divided by. Volume of of solution into hundred. So what you need to do here is volume of solute. What is the volume of solute? You have to keep keep here that this is uh, volume of solute is let it be that I am going to give you a question here. Let it be calculate volume by volume by volume percentage. Volume percentage when when twenty gram twenty gram of sugar is uh, let it let it okay calculate the uh, when when twenty five ml of ethanol is dissolved in 450 ml of water simple question tell me
and uh, the total will be 475 that you have tried here 475 into 100 okay now what you need to do is you need to divide it by 5 when you divide it by 5 you will get 5 ones are 5 five are 25 and 5 nines are 45 and then 5 is that 25 you will get 95 here okay again when you divide it uh, 5 ones are 5 uh, ones are 5 Okay, and then five nineteen is a ninety five. Nineteen five is a ninety five. So we will get here that it is it will be five upon hundred upon nineteen percent. When you divide hundred by nineteen, hundred by nineteen, so you will get here here that nineteen five is a ninety five. Okay, then again five here, then point then zero. Two is a thirty-eight. Then two, okay. Sorry, two is here and one is twelve. Okay. Then zero. Then six is a. We'll get something. So that will be approximate equals to uh, uh. That will be five point two six percent is the correct answer. Okay. Copied. Am um, Radula. Yes, sir. Okay. There is another term called solubility. Solubility means uh, that the number of the amount of solute dissolved. Now, let's move toward towards next next topic. That is solubility. Solubility. It is sim similar. That is that the the amount of the amount of solute, the maximum amount of solute. This is the word you have tried. The maximum amount. maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved that can be dissolved dissolved in 100 g of solvent okay in 100 g of solvent you have to write here this is called solubility in 100 g of solvent So here the maximum amount of uh, you need to keep in mind here that that should be in grams also the maximum amounts of solute there's a maximum amount of solutes in grams in grams okay that can be dissolved in hundred gram of solvent it is called solubility at a specified temperature at a specified temperature okay it is called solubility so we can write here as solubility is equals to you can write it amount of solute amount of solute okay upon uh you have to keep in mind here that amount of solute upon a uh, mass of mass of solvent and uh, that is you need to keep in mind that mass of solvent should be per 100 grams per 100 grams for example If the solvent is five hundred gram, so uh, you need to keep in mind that mass of solvent that is hundred gram. It should be hundred gram. Okay, got it? It should be hundred gram. So if the if the solvent is hundred gram, you need to keep in mind here that. So you can write here that you into hundred or uh, per hundred grams means it it should be divided divided by hundred here. Mass of solvent per hundred grams. So. What do you need to get when you divide it by hundred? So this hundred will goes in multiplication. So you can simply write it mass of solvent into hundred. This is not the percentage. First, you need to keep in mind here that that this is not the percentage. So uh, you need to keep in here that the temperature is not given to you. So simply, uh, if the temperature is being given, it means it is it is the information being given to you. You need to write here temperature. For example, in any question, if the temperature is being given that, for example, in any question, it is being given to you that. That the temperature is sixty degree, the temperature is ninety degree. So it simply means that uh, that you have to 
uh, it simply means that you have to keep in mind that at 60 degree this thing happens you need not to multiply or add or subtract that temperature okay so for example this question has been given to you that 12 gram 12 gram of 12 gram of potassium sulfate of potassium sulfate potassium sulfate sulfate okay is dissolved in is dissolved in is dissolved is dissolved in 75 gram of 75 grams uh, of water at 60 degree celsius at 60 degree celsius okay what is its solubility what is its solubility Sir, what is the use of temperature in solving this, this type of questions? There is no use. That's why I'm saying that there is not in the in, the, in our formula, there is no temperature is being specified here, the formula related to temperature. So for your ninth standard, this is being given that the temperature is giving as an information that's at 60 degrees, this happens. Okay, no not to write the temperature. Okay, anyway. So calculate it. So the answer is 16. 16. 16 answer. Yes, this is 16 gram. So what should be the formula? What should be the unit of this solubility? Do you, do you have any idea what should be the unit of solubility? So you need to keep in mind here that this is this is the amount of solute, amount of solute in grams. And here the mass of solvent in grams. So when the grams and gram will cancel out, it is simply a unitless quantity. So you cannot say that it is the so solubility. You have to say that the solubility of potassium sulfate is 35, 20, 40, whatever it is. Okay. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. You, you need to write here grams, percentage. No, you did not write again. Solubility is simple in numbers. Okay. It is a unit less quantity. So you have to write here that solubility is equals to, you have to write here that is 20, 12. There's a, a maximum amount of solute is 12. And the solvent is 75 into 100. So when you divide it, you will get here 3. Then 4. When you cut it, you will get here 3 ones are, 3 fours are. This is simple 60 answer. Okay. So if the solvent, uh, so if the solvent is the, the value of the solvent is greater than hundred grams, so it's there is no, so we can't use the formula of solubility now. No, no, we can use the formula of the solubility here. So sixteen is the solubility means it means there's maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved. In 100 gram, there is a 75 gram is being given to you. What is being given? It is being given that 75 grams of solute is being given to you. Solvent is given to you. So, so in 75 gram, we are only able to dissolve 12. So in 100 gram, we need to calculate. In 100 gram, how much amount we can dissolve? It is it is 12 gram. It is 12 grams. Okay. Sorry, sorry. In six, it is it is 16 grams. So we have calculated this 16. That 16 grams of solute solute can be dissolved in 100 gram of solvent. Moreover, you need to keep in mind here is that 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 uh, if I change the unit, you were saying that if the answer is if the if we, it is greater than hundred, then what what is it? So you can have it does not matter. So if I double this one, still the solubility will be sixteen. Still the solubility will be sixteen. So let me check. Let me give you that if I require it in seventy five gram, it is twelve grams. So if I did said that twenty four gram. 
of potassium of potassium sulfate is dissolved in 150 gram because in 75 gram 12 gram is dissolved so in 50 150 grams how much it will be dissolved 24 grams so still the solubility will be 16 that in 100 gram it will be 16 so what does this number is indicating here that in 100 grams of water maximum amount of potassium sulfate that can be dissolved is 612 gram okay so you can calculate here again that you can write here 25 24 upon 150 into 100 when you cut it you will get 20 fours uh, and then you have to divide sixza then you divide it you will get 6 ones are 6 fours are then again 16 16 gram is the it means when we calculate the answer and this this value is indicating that 16 grams of solute can be dissolved maximum in 100 grams of sol solvent okay let me practice one or two other questions for this then then it will be clear calculate calculate the mass by mass percentage and solubility of of okay solubility of mm, of sodium chloride sodium chloride okay we are writing here uh, sodium chloride when 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 we find we find that when we find that 20 uh, okay 18 g of okay i'm not writing here 18 i'm writing here 9 g of solute or sodium chloride sodium chloride can be dissolved can be dissolved maximum can be dissolved maximum in the uh, 9 grams of sodium chloride uh, 9 grams of maximum sodium chloride Here you are trying to maximum nine gram of maximum sodium chloride can be dissolved in okay I'm very happy to know can be dissolved in twenty five gram okay gram of water. You have to calculate the mass by mass percentage and also the solubility of the sodium chloride. Only two chapters are coming in your half-field examinations, na? Yes, sir. Ham na? Yes, only sir. The, only the two chapters are coming in your final examination, na? Yes. In chemistry, okay. Sorry, in your half-field examinations. Okay. So we will be going to complete uh, motion chapter in the next class and. Uh, I think cell and uh, is there any other chapter also coming in your examinations in biology? Yes, sir. Sir, tissues also are coming in the half uh, term. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs>
डन समाज में मास परसेंटेज समाज में मास परसेंटेज फोर फिफ्टी अपॉन सेवेंटीन इन फोर फिफ्टी अपॉन सेवेंटीन यस सर This is the mass by mass percentage. Okay, and uh, what is uh, what is uh, solubility? Thirty-six. Right. Hamna, have you done this one? Is Miradula is correct or not? Sir, mass by mass is twenty-six. And mass by mass percentage is twenty-six percent. Yes, sir. And uh, solubility is thirty-six. And solubility is thirty six. So let me check mass by mass percentage how much it will be. So what you need to do is first of all you need to uh, mass by mass percentage will be equal to you can write m by m m slash m or you can write w by w. That's that's the same. So here you need to be keeping the mass of the sodium chloride that is nine grams and the mass of water we need not to write here we need to write here the mass of solution. So the mass of solution will be twenty five gram plus nine gram that will be thirty four. Into hundred. Okay, so uh, that is the mass of water. So mass of solvent is not given. Uh, here we have the mass of it should be the mass of solution. So what we need to write here is that uh, we need to divide it by two. So when you divide it by two, you will get here seventeen and fifty. So you have to write here seventeen upon four fifty. When you divide seventeen by four fifty, four fifty and seventeen, so you will get here that seventeen two is a thirty four. Then we have here is uh, that is one and one eleven and one zero eleven. Okay, then seventeen six is a one zero two. Okay, then we have here eight then point then zero, and then again what we need to do is seventeen five is a seventeen point four approximate will be the answer seventeen point four five approx. So it will be twenty six sorry twenty six point four percent. Is the sol um, mass by mass percentage and solubility is correct. That is solubility is simple. That you have need to keep here that mass of solvent is nine upon twenty uh, five into hundred. When you cut it, you will get here four, and four when multiplied by nine, you will get thirty six. Okay, thirty six is the solubility of uh, of the uh, ethanol. Sorry, sodium chloride. Okay, got it. Are still having some doubt? No doubt, sir. Okay. What are the factors now? Factor affecting the solubility. We have. We need to keep in mind that. What are the factors that affect the solubility? Factors. Factors affecting. Affecting the solubility. Factors affecting. Affecting. The. Solubility. So. You need to keep in mind here that there are the two factors. One is the, one is the temperature. Temperature, and another one is the pressure. Another one is the pressure. So that's why we are saying it is. It's means you knows very well that in cold water we don't uh, we are not able to dissolve uh, the sugar. For example, if you have a cold water and then you start dissolving and you reach a level that after that. And the uh, dissolution stops means you cannot dissolve. So, for example, you have a glass of water, and that is at five uh, degrees Celsius, and this is cold water. Okay, then you start dissolving the sugar into it. Then you start dissolving the sugar into it, and after some time it get dissolved. But uh, then you add more sugar, then it uh, it dissolves. But it reaches to a certain level that when you keep on adding, that the that that sugar stop dissolving. But What happened actually when you start heating up this, heating this uh, part, uh, particular water, okay, particular solution, then you can add more salt or uh, sugar to it, and it will be get dissolved. So temperature on increasing the temperature, solubility of the substance increases. Okay, so you need to keep in mind here that on increasing, but but you need to keep in mind that on increasing the temperature, the solubility of solid and liquid increases, but that of gases decreases. Gases are more soluble in in liquids uh, at lower temperature than rather rather than at higher temperature. For example, if I am having water here and if I am adding a carbon dioxide to it, so if I increase the temperature, the solubility of the carbon dioxide will decreases and the carbon dioxide will escape from it. So you need to keep in mind that the solubility solubility 
of liquids liquids and solid and solid increases increases on increasing the temperature on increasing the temperature temperature but but it decreases on decreasing but it decreases in case of in case of gases if dissolved in water if dissolved in water okay so please note it down Done, sir. Done. Okay. In a similar way, pressure. In case of pressure, on increasing the pressure, the solubility of the gas increases. Means when you apply more pressure in the liquids, when you are adding and you add more pressurized gas, then it will be more easily dissolvable. But, but in case of solid and liquids, when you pressurize it, this actually when you are pressurizing a liquid, what does it mean? It means that you are making the particle very closer to each other. Means if you pressurize this one, what will happen? Actually, these particles will come closer to each other. What would happen actually when you pressurize? Suppose these are the particles; they have the space between them right now, and uh, the particles of sugar. And uh, suppose this, these are the water particles. So what will happen when we uh, when we start dissolving the sugar? Okay, when we start dissolving the sugar, so what will happen actually? These particles have the space between them, and the sugar particles will come in between. And the sugar particles will come in between them. Okay. For example, that these are the sugar particles; they are coming in between them. So these are, these are the intermolecular space, and in the intermolecular space, the sugar particle get dissolved. But what would happen if if I start if I start pressuring the water particles, and these water particles will come closer to each other? They will come closer to each other, and the intermolecular space will decreases. And when the intermolecular space decreases, what would happen actually? Actually, the intermolecular space decreases. Intermolecular space decreases. So means less amount of solute can be dissolved. In in case of uh, that's uh, we were dissolving, the more sugar can be dissolved when the pressure is less. When we increase the pressure, the solubility of uh, solids and liquid decreases. Okay, so we can write here on increasing the pressure. Second, on increasing the pressure. On increasing the pressure. The pressure. the solubility solubility of liquids and solid and solid decreases while while that of solid increases okay while while that of that of gases it increases means if the gases are be, is being dissolved okay then the solubility will increase okay got it yes sir
We're still having some doubt. No, sir. Okay. Copy this one. Done, sir. Done? Okay. Let's move further. Let's move further. So, uh, in the next class, uh, what we will be going to study is, uh, we will discuss, uh, study the separation techniques when we have a mixtures. Then we will study the separation. How can we separate the different the mixtures by different ways? Okay. So, uh, let, let me tell you one more thing that there are some alloys. What are alloys? Alloys are the homogeneous mixtures actually. And let's have some brief discussion. Uh, descriptions or brief review of the alloys what actually the alloys are actually alloys alloys okay so we know that alloys are the homogeneous mixtures of two or more metals or non-metals alloys alloys are the uh, the homogeneous mixtures homogeneous mixtures mixtures of two or more metals metals or metals and non metals or metals and non metals non metals metals and non metals you actually don't know the uh, right now actually so let it be but you have to mind, keep in mind here that alloys are the homogeneous mixtures actually what are alloys when that when two or more metals are mixed together not in a definite proportion we don't have the we have the ratio or we have the percentage that 1%, this one is added to 1 to 2%, uh, sorry, 90% or 10% or 90 means we have the simple percentage. We don't have the fixed ratio. For example, uh, you need to keep in mind what is the difference between the alloys and the compound. Alloys is a mixtures. Actually, when we add zinc to copper, to copper, and we have the ratio of 40 or 60. Okay. So then it will give you simple brass, brass. When we add tin, and lead and lead then it will give you solder it will give you solder solder okay and uh, in a similar way when we add uh, when we have add tin uh, tin to the copper then we have bronze so we have different different types of alloys depending on the requirements and we had add carbon carbon to iron iron it will give you simple uh, steel. Not. I'm not talking about the stainless steel. I'm talking about the steel only. Okay. So this is the steel. Okay. Stainless steel. So here it carbon is non-metal. Here is iron is metal. So it's an example of metal or non-metal. Okay. Metal and metal. Uh, two or more metal or metal and non-metal. So metals and non-metal example is steel. Where one uh, where uh, iron. I mean uh, means in iron carbon is being added. So what what. Uh, What's uh, actually why we are making alloys? Alloys help us to make or uh, to make the metals or to uh, if we need a metals of desirable quality, but actually it does not exist. So we add, we make them alloys. Okay, alloys help us to make it uh, according to our needs. For example, solder is used for for measuring, uh, uh, for using for soldering purpose for the electronic equipments. Okay, you have seen that uh, the wire. This is a, this, for example, I have, I have to join the wire at this point. So what will I do? I simply keep this one wire here and then I use the soldering system and the soldering system will, will attach this wire here permanently. So actually solder, what is solder? Solder is a alloy actually. And this solder help us, help us, uh, that we need, uh, what, what are the characteristics of solder? Solder, is, uh, the characteristic of cold solder is that it can easily melt. When we, when we, when we put it in fire, it can easily melt. 
it has melting point when we touch it with hot hot something hotter hotter uh, something then it it get easily melt and it it can easily and it is a good conductor of electricity also so in a similar way what is the quality of steel that it it is uh, it is going to have uh, means it uh, it is un uh, detortionable means it can, it does not distort what is distortion actually distortion is when we have the iron so for example let me explain you why what is the purpose of making alloys first of all we need to discuss this one what is the purpose of making alloys alloys help us to get the metal of suit of our desirable wish okay our, our desirable uh, it fulfill our needs actually when we have to run the tra tra train over over uh, over the railway track over a railway track so what we need we need a strong iron we need a strong iron we need a strong a strong metal that does not easily distort distort means distortion means does not change its shape when a heavy load a load is does not easily break okay when heavy load runs over it so actually we have the particles of air what we do actually that we have the particles of iron like this we have the particles of iron like this okay then what we actually do is is wait a minute what we actually do is We have such type of particles, and what we okay. Let me make it fast. so these are the particles of iron actually these are the particles of iron let these are i am writing here these are the particles of iron and the iron symbol is fe so i am writing here fe particles okay so what we actually find here is that these are the atoms of iron and when heavy load runs over it they generally change or distortions comes over it means we have a distortion what have actually happen is uh, for example let me explain you actually happens when the heavy load runs over the iron then one layer slide one layer of atom slide over the other okay one layer of atom slide over the other and this result in a distortion in shape of the railway track or something when where where heavy load is being required so there this result in the distortions distortion in the shape okay so here you find that that these layer comes over it and there is a distortions comes in the so this layer slides so what we do actually we simply have an a carbon atom iron the size of iron, iron atom is heavier no sorry is bigger in size as compared to that of carbon so carbon atom is suitable that comes in the space that comes in the space uh, between between these okay the so carbon atom is suitable and carbon atom is suitable that is very small in size and this carbon atom carbon atom can easily fit in the space between this one it can easily fit in the space between this one okay in this state you know. so when we have when we have something that can easily fit in in, in between these these spaces then this slide then the slide Link of one layer over the other is not possible because this prevent this carbon atom prevent the sliding of layer and this make it uh, actually strong. So this is the property that we are making the alloys that we add something in the interstitial space. We call them interstitial space. This is the interstitial space. Okay, okay. So this is the interstitial sites where we are putting this approximate carbon atoms uh, in this in, in between the interstitial sites so that the slide one slide does not slide over over the other and the distortion will not be there. I mean the shape of the a metal will not change okay so this is uh, this property that why we are adding the carbon is uh, to to make a desirable metal to make a desirable something that that is something have higher strength okay so we make a steel by using iron we have 98 to 99% iron iron 
एंड देन टू 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 वन परसेंट टू टू वन परसेंट कार्बन वी एडेड टू एडेड टू इट एंड देन इट विल गिव्स यू व्हेन वी एड दिस मिक्सचर्स देन इट विल गिव्स अस पर्टिकुलर ऑयल कॉल्ड इट स्टील इन अ सिमिलर वे व्हेन वी हैव जिंक एंड ग्रास इट विल गिव्स अस समथिंग दैट हैज दैट इज लाइटर इन वेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड हैज डू नॉट रस्ट एंड सेकंडली uh it is it is very cheaper I mean, not very cheaper as, as compared to copper means it its uh, value comes between copper and zinc so this gives us brass brass okay in a similar way lead and uh, the particles of lead actually the particles of lead and tin hate each other they hate each other tin has a high melting point uh, means uh, as compared to uh, the, we have actually tin and lead particles hate each other that's why they do not like each other when we mix them when we mix them togetherly okay when we mix them let's suppose i am mixing this one okay so they actually hate each other they do not have they do not like each other so because of that the force of attraction between them decreases and they have the part they have a uh, we have a part, alloy that is going to have the lower melting point okay they don't like each other so it is repelling no i don't like it go away and it is also saying no go away no go away so they are saying each other they don't like each other so because of that they when we when we uh, pass a slightly heat, when we heat it heat it and it can easily break uh, it can easily melt it will easily uh, be freed okay so that's why we, we can say that the tin and lead has uh, i mean the solder that is in alloy is going to have lower melting point than the tin itself and the lead itself okay the tin and lead uh, has some particular melting point that is above the melting point of solder solder when we when we mix the tin and lead they we have we obtain an alloy that is going to have lower melting points and why we are why we need such type of alloy that has a lower melting point uh, just because we need to we need to use it for soldering purposes we can easily we need a metal that can easily melt and help us in fixing the wires okay we don't need the blast furnaces to uh, to melt it we need a something that that can easily melt okay so we uh, like this. sometimes we need something that that is going to have very high temperature that is in uh, so we we choose those metal that is going to have the higher force of attraction for example if i am having some metals that that like each other there are two particles that that like each other for example the green is liking the red one okay and what will happen actually when these particles are mixed when these particles are mixed they will hold tightly to each other and the resultant the resultant alloy will be going to have the higher melting point it will be going to have the higher melting point than the than the the two metals itself because their particles like each other they are there is a force of attraction between these particles they like each other and they do that we the when we heat it they will require a large force of attraction so to remove them to come to bring them in the in, into the melt in the into the liquid state so when we need some metals that is going to have some uh, higher temperature high melting points so we we melt we made the alloys of those metals that that that's like each other the particle of them like each other and when we need some metals uh, some metals that hate each other or we can we need a metals that is going to have lower melting point then what we actually do is we choose those metal whose particles hate each other they don't like each other actually they have the less force of attraction between them so we when we mix them if they can easily melt they can easily melt they they, they because they are particle hate each other they don't like each other they don't want the bond between them so they can easily melt so got it what i want to say or still having yes, some doubt yes sir no sir no doubt so, so these are the these are our desirable characteristics that how alloy is actually works and why we need alloys the purpose of making alloys is that to fulfill our needs we need a desirable metals according to our will for example if i need if i need a strong metal uh, that 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 should be lighter in weight first of all that should be lighter in weight but it should be strong strong for example for making aircraft for making aircraft so we need duralumin there is a special alloy that we that when we mix alloy and uh, sorry aluminium and zinc so that will gives you strength and moreover it is lighter in weight in a similar way bronze bronze is an alloy of copper and tin copper and tin when mixed together they gives you bronze bronze okay this bronze is used for making making copper is uh, copper and tin particles like each other like each other so they have the high melting points or moreover uh, sorry uh, uh they have the high high strength means they are very good they don't uh, they don't uh, get the rusted uh, they are lighter in weight and moreover they are strengthable so during the war uh, we need some equipment that are that should be lighter in weight and that should be very hard means when we hit some 
some some some uh, we can say that some preventive measures that for example we call it dhal so when when a when a sword touch it it should not get damage so we need it's uh, it should be same as uh, it's cutting power should be same so when you touch it uh, when you cut it uh, when you strike it with the iron iron or some other metals so it sh it should not uh, get damage so we need something and should be lighter in weight so that is that we called it bronze the bronze is that metal that provides such type of uh, uh, okay so hamna did you left the class hello hamna hello hamna are you there is my voice not audible to you so these are the quality of actually these are the quality of uh, of alloys that they alloys help us to make the desirable okay so please copy this one that's all for today